And we're live. We're live. What's up, guys? Just like every week that I do, I uh, will give it a couple minutes for people to get on, say hello, uh, and also start asking those all important questions. I am actually going through my phone right now. That's why I'm looking down uh, because I am pulling up some pictures of some things that I want to show you guys because um, I'm not in those places right now. I actually was down in my new shop, which we'll get to. And I meant to go live there and I completely forgot. <laughs> um, but I made a video about it and I can show you a picture of, of said shop. Um, you know, but I got a new shop, which was really, really awesome. I'm really excited about it. Um, hello. Uh, I did put this on today. That is the uh, bed rack, the rack to the new truck. Uh, I installed that today. It was really hot out today where I am, which is in Portland. Um, I've been MIA. No, I haven't. I've got like two videos a week. Plus, I do live every Wednesday. You've been MIA. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm here. I'm not MIA whatsoever, actually. Maybe you don't have your notifications on. I'm sorry. Hi, Linda. Um, yeah, so I posted that picture on my Instagram just now the, the, of the bed, the, the, the rack over the bed. Um, what's up, Leslie? How are you? Um, so, uh, let's see. And this is my new shop. It's empty in this picture right now, but that's the new shop. Table saws from like 1942, but it was a, they, uh, the person that, uh, is leasing it to me actually just left it in there and I was like, yeah, I'll work. I'll use it. Whatever. It's no big deal. What's up, Annette Gray from Texas? Um, but yeah, I'm really, um, I'm going to start doing some lagoon tables here actually really soon. I had somebody reach out to me. I, uh, actually need to call that person. They want to order a couple tables, which is really cool. And I'm going to be getting started with that this week. Yay. And I have a really cool design of a table that I'm going to be doing as a prototype that will probably be, um, definitely not Mark, by the way, definitely not. It's called hustle and work. Welcome. Um, that's sarcasm, if you couldn't uh, pick up on that, by the way. Uh, some of the best songs of the old ones. Yeah, well, not this one. I should do a video of this one because it was bad. Uh, it's actually dangerous. Um, so I'm probably not going to use it all that much. Uh, I did just go buy a thickness planer because I needed one. And that will actually be um, in a couple days. So what's up from Ohio? Linda, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. I get hate all the time on every uh, video or, uh, you know, comments I get on Instagram. I'm actually getting hate emails now, which is pretty cool. Thank you for those guys. <laughs> Not you guys. I'm just saying in general, uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty funny. Uh, Scotland. What is up? Hi from Scotland. That's pretty awesome. Can you really update, update us on your situation? Are you back in an apartment? but looking to get back into van life. So uh, you have, probably haven't tuned in in a while because I've talked about this a lot. Um, but yes, I uh, recently sold my van and the intention was to actually settle down into a city, uh, which is where I am now in Portland. I was back and forth between buying land, which is what I really wanted to do because I wanted to build a container home. Um, that ran into a couple complications uh, financially. And uh, by the way, Mark, that goes into the whole thing of, that I'm not rich. Uh, and then uh, I decided to purchase a condo. Um, but again, banks don't like people that are self-employed, this guy. So I decided to take a year to really bust my butt and work hard um, at this whole thing that I'm doing, which is um, you know YouTube and van life and it's back into stand-up comedy and also building stuff for van life, which I uh, will get into in September or start in September. And, um, so I rented an apartment and I will, my plans are to have an overland rig, which I went out, what I went and bought, which was a Jeep gladiator. I just got it like two weeks ago and I'm going to be making that into an overland rig that I'll be taking trips on. I'll be uh, using it quite often, actually, um, be going to gatherings and events. I'll be doing a lot of talks. Uh, I lived full time on the road, as a lot of you know, for three and a half years, I've been planning van life for even longer than that. 
I've got a lot of friends in the industry. Um, and then my, my hopes, if, if finances hold up, uh, I would like to build another van, a third van by January, start around January, if not uh, early spring. Um, that's still up in the air, whether or not I'm going to do it or whether, uh, when I'm going to start it. Um, but my hopes is if I can have a good couple of months, I want to do that. And then I want to get into the container home and like tiny home village, I guess you could call it, which would be containers as well as vans and blah, blah, blah. And I'm looking for land to do that, but not until pretty much not until this time next year. So it'll be like the end of summer, beginning of fall next year is really what I, I kind of want to do. So um, I don't typically talk about m like my goals and dreams. Yeah. Jennifer K. I was just on Sydney's TikTok. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Sydney, Sydney and I talked yesterday, oddly enough. And then we were, uh, she, I was, I was on TikTok randomly and I was just, I uh, saw her live. Um, but I don't normally talk about what my plans are, my future goals and endeavors are because, or at least I don't publicly talk about them anymore. I used to a lot. And I always feel that they're always changing around. Hey, Matt B, what's up? I always feel like they're changing around. So it's hard for me to say these are the things that I want to do. And then something changes and then I get called out a lot. So I don't like doing that anymore. I just like doing and showing you guys and also bringing as much good content as possible in regards to information or fun or uh, whatever it may be, tours, um, products. Uh, learning about new companies or things of that nature. So uh, that was, I guess, my what I do in a nutshell. And I, I forget who asked that question, but uh, that was a very long-winded answer. If you're in Oregon, why not rent the uh, by the coast? Uh, by, I'm assuming that was supposed to be coast or the cost in a tiny home. I forget the name of the, uh, but there is a decent tiny home community near you. Um, I thought about it. I did. The thing is, I I travel quite often, um, and I wanted something in an apartment building. And uh, tiny homes, I actually got my apartment for actually a, quite a bit less uh, for what a tiny home would go for in a monthly rate. And I, I got a good terms and good lease, and, and um, it's a brand new place. Nobody's actually lived in this, brand new appliances. And uh, there was there's no like really utilities or anything of that nature. And when I do leave, uh, my whole place is secure. Uh, you know, nobody can get in. It's a gated building, whatever, gated community, whatever. So um, I just felt more secure doing an apartment than I would be in a tiny house. Maybe, you know, maybe next year I would do a tiny house. Um, like you said, be easy. I like that. Be easy. Um, I, I swear Apple is making me look like an idiot, LOL. <laughs> it's all good. It's uh, what, uh, autocorrect. It's all good. Um, howdy from Colorado Firehawk. You know, I just had an interesting conversation with a, with a gentleman that, um, oddly enough about Colorado and Portland, we were comparing the two cities, uh, Denver in particular. Um, but I'm, I'm interested to see if their project takes off. I doubt he's watching, uh, this live right now, but if you are, you know, say hello and I'll talk about your, about your endeavors. Justin and Christina's RV van life. That's a name, huh? You put RV and van life in your title. That's bold. Which one are you? <laughs> Doesn't matter. I, I, I'm I a favor of both. So, hey, no big deal. It's uh, If it's brand new, then it's worth it. Thank you, Be Easy. I'm down with the old apartment homes. I do. The thing is, you know, what's funny is that when I was looking for condos, I was actually uh, looking in like the old restored like warehouses. Oh, so much character. So if I was in it long term, um, I actually wanted to keep this apartment cold like the term cold, cold as in like, I wanted to, you know, get out. Mike, I just saw your comment. Um, uh, I, Cause I want to get out of here. I don't want to be here very long term. So there's a lot of Ikea crap. You know what I mean? Um, Mike Goldberg, everybody, by the way, everybody, guys, I've known this kid guy person. He's my age since kindergarten. One of my best friends. I love you, buddy. I uh, hope you all well. Yeah, Mike, you're welcome to come anytime you want. I got a, um, I got a, a pull-out sofa with your name on. It's a studio apartment, pal. Um, but I got a pull-out sofa that I'll sleep on, or you, you can come camping with me anytime you want, pal. Um, yeah, man. Dude, where the hell have you been? <laughs> what, do you have a family and such? Come on. Uh, you know. Oh, be easy. Don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about it. 
or girl. Uh, what's up, Chuck Town? I have a crisis with autograph. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do. Yeah, you do. I lived in a loft, bef uh, a loft before in Atlanta, and it was so cool. Matt B, I love that loft style. I love the exposed brick. That is like my jam, and that is exactly what I wanted my condo to be. I found like two or three amazing condos in the Pearl District in downtown, if anybody's familiar with it. And then the bank screwed me. So F all that noise. Yup, Class B vintage 1999 road track. Wow, so you're RVing it. Hardcore, Justin and Christina. That's awesome. Like 1999 road track. Is that the ones that uh, it's like on a, is it a Chevy chassis? Those are pretty cool. I like those a lot. I saw a couple of them when I was at um, uh, uh, Rubber, Rubber Tramp Rendezvous, Rubber Tramp Rendezvous, RTR, uh, which is Bob Wells' little thing thingamajiggy. Like he hosts this every year. It's it was so cool. Like I saw a couple of those uh, roaming around there. They're really nice. I like them. Hey, I need uh, I need answers answered. Nolan, I didn't see any of your questions. If I do skip your question, guys, it's not because I'm looking over them. It's because I'm I just I accidentally pass them and the other people are um, asking questions and, you know, the thing scrolls up. So if I missed your question, um, instead of maybe getting angry with me, maybe just ask again. And I'm more than happy to answer the best way that I can. New Hampshire. What's up? Van on the run. Good name. Dodge with a high top. OK. Oh, that's right. It is a Dodge. Doi. Uh, hey, bud. How uh, how long did you have your last build? Um what was it like uh, da, 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 about 12, 13, 40, about 14 to 15 months, give or take somewhere in there. Yeah. So just over a year, Steve. Uh, hey, sorry about not responding. Kevin T you last week. I asked about renting the shop. Wait, I asked you about renting a shop for my van build in Portland area. I'm actually in California planning to move there. Suggestions. Oh, Kevin, that's right. Um, I, you know, uh, a, a maker space. Um, I honestly just honest a, like a like a Craigslist search or a Google search of like places. I, I personally in the Portland area try to look more industrial. Um, there's a lot of places on Route 30 in like the northwest section. Uh, it's a very industrial area. I wouldn't I wouldn't spend more than like seventy cents to a dollar in that uh price range for square footage um try to team up with somebody you obviously save costs that way um but there's there are some spaces over there um it might be a little bit more maybe dollar fifty a square a square foot um but you know the problem is is you can't that's so hard to find something that's like a thousand square feet you know or 500 square feet there's like like a one garage space it's going to be like 3,000 square feet or 7,000 square feet. So it's going to be hard to find a real small garage that can get you what you need for one build. Um, I think uh, there's a place, Kevin, you're going to have to email me because I don't want to say out loud the place because it's actually where my shop is and I don't want to be bombarded <laughs> with a bunch of, with a bunch of people. Um, so, you know, not just everybody here, but like anybody that watches this after the fact, so, uh, Kevin, by all means, uh, shoot me an email. Just say, you know, your intentions. Um, but info at jaretachi.com. Will you be going to Quartzsite this year again? I didn't go last year, and I was kind of bummed about it, actually. I will have the Jeep with a, a rooftop tent. I plan on going to as many events and gatherings as possible in the upcoming year. I Like, on my list right now off the top of my head, is Colorado Tiny Festival, all the tiny fest events, which I've been to and I'm, I'm part of, um, Open Roads Fest, uh, all the Overland Expos, all those for sure, uh, because now I have an Overland rig. Um, actually, thank you for everybody reminding me, whoever that was, uh, Lee, or no, uh, whoever I said that. Oh, Justin and Christina. Um, there is an Overland Van Expo that I plan on going to here in Portland. I think they're going to Tahoe and then Big Bear or Big Bear and then Tahoe and then coming back up to the Portland, Washington area. I'm definitely going to that in, in, oh, crap. It's October and I'm supposed to be somewhere. I just realized that. Okay. 
Uh, well, I'll figure it out. I really want to go to it. So, um, yeah, you know, my family obligations might have to wait. So if my dad's on here, if my mom's watching this, uh, my brother Jeff doesn't care. I know that. But, like, if those people are on here, I'm sorry. I'm going to be late to the party. <laughs> Uh, Promaster Transit. You know, that's a tough call. Mark, it really depends on what your wants and needs are in regards to, um, you know, what you're going to be using your van for. Um, can't stay. Hey, by the way, Dan and Rachel, if you guys are staying or tuned, that, this is their shirt, The Messy Journey. They said their battery is at 1%. Um, I think Nolan is mad. Just think that he's letting you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, pros and cons, I'm in the market. Oh, Promaster Transit. Got you. Um, pro master is wider. Uh, so it's more cubic footage wise, uh, transit is higher roof. So if you're tall, I would say transit, um, transit comes in real wheel drive and they're all are now we're making an all wheel drive. Um, let's see. Pro master is a front wheel drive. However, when I was at descend on Ben last year, I felt like every van that got stuck was a pro master. That's because so much weight is in the back of the van. It lifts the tires and up off the ground just enough that it gets, you know, stuck in the sand very easy. So keep that in mind. I do like the Pro Master because of the cost. Really inexpensive and probably the easiest van to build in. Not probably. It is the easiest van to build in. Um, but I do love the transits. I've been like the more and more I've been stepping into transits, the more and more I like them. You can convert a transit into four by four. So if that is something you're interested in, you can also get onto the wait list at Quigley or at, there's another one out here on the West Coast. Um, you can get on that wait list and you can get into that as a four by four rig. So there's a lot of options of transit. Um, I do like them. I do like all the configurations they have. Um, I like the short, the shortest wheelbase that they have with the super high roof. That's a really cool configuration in my opinion. Um, but I mean, it really just depends on that. I hope that was enough pros and cons for you. Thoughts on lithi lithionics. Lithionics are the Rolls Royce of batteries. Top of the line, no questions asked. However, it's with that being said, it's also the highest price point. Um, I prefer to use like rely on or Lion for batteries, but lithionics, you can get one battery that's like 400 amp hours. It's like a $10,000 battery. But that's like your one battery. So instead of getting like four lions or four Relions that are 100 amp hours each that take up, you know, this much room, you get one Lithionics battery that's 100, that's 400 amp hours. That's yay big. Great company. I actually am trying to work with them. I actually have a friend that's friends with the CEO and they're trying to get me in touch with them. I would love a Lithionics battery uh, in my possession because they're top of the line. Again, Rolls Royce though. What's your favorite lithium battery? <laughs> Um, well, I am technically, um, a, a brand ambassador or an affiliate with two companies, rely on and lion. Those are my two favorite, mostly because I'm an affiliate with them, but I am actually, I, I did all my, you know, vetting, I guess. Um, and I felt that those two were the top tier in the market. Um, I did was, it's not that I don't like Battleborn. I just like the other ones better. I think where Lion has a slight edge over Lion, but Lion has a lot of good things that are really, really cool about it. Um, smaller footprint. Uh, they have like a, like on battery, you can like hit it and you can actually use a little button and you can see the percentage on there. Um, lions are cheaper. Uh, so there's a lot of pros to having a Lion. I just think like, uh, Quality wise, I think lie, uh, rely on us the slight edge. Um, hope that answered your question. Okay, I drive a 2007 for work and I love it. There, hey Matt B, they are good. Then yeah, I know you uh, you've said that before. I think, and they are really good vehicles. Uh, and again, who can't work on a Ford? I mean, I, I am not very like savvy when it comes to the vehicles, like mate, um, mechanic wise, but I can work on a Ford. I had a Ford Mustang back in uh, high school, by the way. I love that thing. I was an 88 Mustang, if anybody was curious. I hit a telephone pole because I had it sideways around a turn. Hmm. It was raining out. I have maybe too much information. I don't know. Uh, for Overland Build, uh, you might look into a Delica. I know the Delica as well. They are small and lots of, yeah, they're great. I love Delicas. They're freaking awesome. There's one that is like at my shop area um, all the time. Uh, I, I actually kind of wanted to bother them to see if I could do a tour of it. They're that cool. 
uh, the, the Toyota Delicas and the Toyota High, or not Toyota Delica, whoever makes Delica. And then there's a Toyota High Ace, which is like the Delica as well. They're super cool. Uh, also, obviously, the Westphalias or the uh, the Synchros, which is the 4 by 4 version of the um, of the Westphalia. Whew. <laughs> yeah. Messy journey. Dan and Rachel are back. My vote is transit, especially the new all-wheel drive. Uh, that I might officially hit next year. Best availability for driving for us tall guys. Dan, how tall are you? Six foot? Come on. Um, do you want to say what you're doing, Dan, on your on your you know, on the comments? Do you want to instead of me announcing it? Do you want me to say and then I'll say what it is? Uh, I would love to bring my van to Tiny Fest. Yeah, Chuck Down. Why don't you uh, hit up Renee and tell her that you want to? Uh, I think they're still doing the Iowa one. Um, all things considered. Mark, you're welcome. Uh, there is a place in North Texas that allows you to convert uh, your van uh, to four by four on your own. Yeah, if you you can do that if you just buy parts off of UJoint. I believe UJoint online or UJoint. If you just type in UJoint, I think the, a couple of my friends have done it. Uh, the, uh, there's a Instagram page called Gypsy Tribe. Uh, they are really really nice couple. They did it uh, to them to their ambulance, like an old school ambulance, which is a Ford chassis. Really, really nice. Be easy. People complain about the U joint going out. Big deal. It's easily accessible and it takes one hour tops. It doesn't really only take an hour. Holy Christmas. Transit is my van build. Kevin T. Awesome. Um, somebody mentioned Sydney earlier uh, that I was just on Sydney's TikTok live. Oddly enough, I was. Uh, she also has a transit. Again, I actually wasn't sold on transit until I stood for a long period of time in Sydney's van. Uh, and then I saw other transits. I saw I saw a bunch down at Mark Shop, and I've seen them, you know, more and more as as the years have progressed and being converted. And they are they're nice. I can't, uh, you know, maybe I should do a transit as my next van, and that way I would actually have built in all three technically instead of just stepping into everybody else's. <laughs> um, uh, what is your favorite? And I'm sorry, um, I'm sorry about that to hear about your friend around the tree. That's I mean. Yeah, that sucks. I'm really sorry. Thoughts on Nomadic Rooftop 12 volt AC? I don't know enough about it, although a lot of people have talked about it. I want to say it's a relatively newer product. I think it's only been on about a year now. Um, I know the other 12 volt rooftop is the King Tech. I need to get in contact with Nomadic because I really want to kind of test them out and see what's what. Um, like, for example, when I wanted to know more about Fresair, I literally I found the CEO and I called him or whoever it was, I don't want to say him or her, but I called them and I was like, all right, I'm going to need to know everything about this. And I need to do that with the nomadic rooftop. If it's a 12 volt AC and if I'm, I'm assuming it's pumping out 8,000 BTUs, which is the other two 12 volt ACs that I know of, which is the King tech and the cruising comfort, which is what I had. Uh, they pump out about 8,000, 8,500 BTUs, 7,500, uh, you know, in other places, depending on where you are. So, that's right about there. Dude, you're getting a uh, Westie as a part-time ring. Have you seen the... No, I'm not getting a Westie as a bar. I was just talking about them. I like them. I actually have a Jeep now. So that's my part-time rig. Uh, what is your favorite uh, What is your favorite front-opening small fridge freezer? Thanks. Um, isotherm. You can't go wrong with an isotherm. They were originally built for boats. Um, Dometics are good, but isotherms, I feel like, can take the... Uh, the beating better, I think, as well as um, the tilting of, you know, when we drive. Uh, so I don't know. I just like isotherm better for that for that reason. I think the compressors are a little bit better. Uh, I wish Shelby would come out with a transit. <laughs> that would be cool. Um, the fridge, back to the fridge freezer. Uh, oh, Vitra Frigo, which I don't know too much about, uh, but I've seen them. Uh, it's it's almost like a uh, isotherm knockoff, um, but they're good. They're good. I've seen them. That they have bigger freezers, um, but I do like the isotherms. By the end of the day, I remember the story about the Fox body from the long time ago. Colorado has so many adventure vans out here. I see. I'm I'm out here visiting now. I actually I wanted I wanted to go to Colorado. I was so bummed that Colorado Tiny Fest got canceled this year because I was really looking forward to going to Colorado for like a month. But I'm gonna get there anyways. I'll take the um, I'll take Ghost Three over there with the rooftop tent. I keep on hiccuping. Maybe because I'm talking fast. 
Uh, what roof tent did you get? Uh, William, I went with a company called Desert Armor. It was between Desert Armor and Eye Camper. Uh, a couple different reasons I picked Desert Armor. One, uh, because they talked to me about the condensation issues. So they double layered uh, where for the condensation issue. Um, maybe Eye Camper did that. I'm not sure. Um, and I am now a brand ambassador. And now this, like, I was willing to pay full price. But they did give me a discount, not a huge one, but they give me a discount. And um, and that also sets up anybody else that wants a uh, Desert Armor tent. Uh, they also get $100 off by using my name. So I went with a Desert Armor, which is out of Arizona. Uh, they they all, again, the owners of the company also camp on a weekend basis. Like they go out every single weekend. So that was another thing. Uh, it's also a family run company. Uh, it's a smaller company. And uh, the only two that I was aware of, which was I Camper and Desert Armor, they're the only ones that could fit over that five foot bed that I really wanted because I want it. I don't want it up high. I wanted it just over the bed. Um, so that's why I went with them, which I'll go into details on a, on a different video. Uh, by you, John, I didn't mean the company. Oh, I meant the main. Con oh, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. What? Uh, let's see. Transit EcoBoost Twin Turbo is what I'm looking for. They're also rare gems, I think, aren't they? They're not easy to find in a in a van, right? Uh, I've always uh, let's see. I've always uh, just wanted I've wanted a Sprinter just to say I live in a Benz. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of did the same thing, be easy. Like I wanted the Sprinter because when you're in a Sprinter and when you drive all three, and I've driven all three. I've been a val I was a valet for 17 years, so I've driven everything. I've even driven a Bugatti, guys. So I've driven literally everything. I've driven all the Lamborghinis. I've driven it all. Um, but when you're in a Mercedes, whether it's a Sprinter or an S-Class or whatever, they just drive that much better. Now, my favorite luxury car is actually an Audi, but whatever. To each their own, Audi also doesn't make uh, vans. So I think Audi's owned by what, Volkswagen? Volkswagen needs to come out with another van. I know it's over in Europe. I know. Uh, let's see here. It seems like most marine appliances uh, are better for van life than 100%. Be easy. Uh, you know, if you're new to the van life world, you're going to learn very, very quickly that uh, a lot of our products and, and, and things that we get for van life are through the marine industry because people have been living on boats way, I, I don't know about longer than living in RVs, but like um, I think they've just mastered it to the point where they can handle all elements. They can handle you know, the, 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 the rolling earthquake and they're on the high seas. Right. So I think they've just mastered it in a way that they, they're above and beyond what we can do in regards to the RV world. But yes, the Marine world and RV world are like this. Hi, Justin and Christina van life. Gracie, do you know them seeking adventures? Uh, 99 in the chat. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Oh, we dropped. I was at like one Oh three at one point. Um, ooh, ooh, I got an offer for something. Um, I get those. I, I can't stand them. It takes me a while to go through emails, by the way. Chucktown has a cruising comfort. I want to see what you have to say about it. Uh, but before I get to Chucktown, do you use sound deadener all over the van as an insulating layer before the thinsulate or only in some of the areas? Great question. Ju is it Julie? Julia? Um, yes. And the reason I use the sound dender all over, and I picked this up off of Mark, um, is because it actually creates, uh, Mark from Nomadic Customs, uh, it creates a thermal break. There is a YouTube video out there somewhere. I saw it forever and a moon ago, but it was a van sitting in the sun, and a person had one of those thermal rated guns, right? The, the, they can rate, they can, they can de detect temperatures, and they had a, the sound dender, and they had bare metal. They were inside the van. And they pointed it at the bare metal and it was reading like a hundred and something degrees. And then they moved it over to the sound dinner area and it was reading like 95 degrees. So that creates a thermal break from the, uh, because the metal acts as a conductor when it's in the sun. So it will radiate the inside heat of your van like dramatically. So I, that is why you'll see everybody cover all of the metal with a sound dinner or there's a couple other uh, things that you can use. But yes, that is exactly why you do that. I wouldn't use spray foam because spray foam is actually not meant to breathe as much as it does in a van, FYI. 
we can go into a whole bunch of stuff about insulation, but we're not going to because I don't have the time for that. Chucktown. Oh, man, I keep on going back to you, but then I'm reading another one. Hi, Jared. Is there any app on their website, a uh, homeowner that are willing to rent a place in their house to park and stay in a station? Yeah, there is, and now I'm blanking on the name. Oh, my goodness. If anybody knows the name that uh, he's talking, the name of the app that he's talking about, there's actually a bunch of different apps that people like rent out there. Uh, if the messy journey was still on here, they actually, there's like a website that they, that they told me about. It's really cool. You pay like, uh, like an annual fee and then you can like literally park inside people's uh, boondocking. Is that what it is? Well, boondocking, is that the, is that the site boondocking.com? Because there is a site for it. Um, all right, Chuck down. Let's see what you say about the cruising comfort. Cruising comfort is so sweet. Uh, works perfect for me and it's not crazy hot. Yes, I agree with you hundred percent. When I had it in my van, uh, before I sold it, it was there to take the edge off. So when on these very hot days, like we're in today, when it's 95 and hundred degrees outside, that can bring your inside temperature down in your van to like 80 degrees. 80 seems a little hot, but compared to hundred and something outside or 95 outside, trust me when I tell you this, it is a, a game changer. Um, so that's, that's amazing. Works perfect for me. And uh, okay. you about 20% of my battery overnight in about eight hours. Wow. That's actually really good. Um, you probably do. You probably played with the fan settings. You probably don't have the fan like blowing, like pumping out. Right. I'm assuming maybe you do. I don't know. Chuck down Then on the run. What is the best material to use for cabinets? Are we talking about faces? Or are we talking about interior? Um, it depends on what your finished look is going to be. If you're going to be painting or if you're going to be staining or if you're going to be oiling, um, finished maple has a really good natural finish to it. Um, if you wanted to paint, uh, poplar also takes a good stain. Uh, poplar, uh, poplar plywood, if you want to, um, uh, birch is also good. I personally, if you want it like interior of drawers, uh, Baltic birch is really really nice and has a it's like a it's like a woodworker's touch it's that's what kind of what they use for drawers and and cabinetry um but if we're talking finishes like faces and things like that birch excuse me birch um and poplar is good for painting and staining like i like i said and um finished maple it has a really like if you want to keep it na all natural um finished maple is really really nice uh, if you want to go crazy expensive you could go with the, like walnut <laughs> which i i love walnut personally but yeah yeah. Yeah. What is the best? Okay. Audi and VW luxury brands. Audi Alexa. Gotcha. Uh, what have you heard about Explorer vans? They are near me. Have you heard of Explorer vans? They are near me. Um, no. Where are you? Um, yes. Via your, your, your YouTube lives. Really? I don't, I have, I mentioned them before. Um, okay. I'm not about to, call that number <laughs> harvest host that's another good one um but you there's a little um there's a couple things with harvest host that you have to qualify for right isn't isn't that weird there's something weird with them uh van on the run interior weight like my own personal interior weight i'm kind of heavy right now i'm really not liking it so much that's a personal question uh are you asking about vans is that what you're asking about, Van on the Run? You asked something. What's the best material for using cabinet? Ah, I got you. Interior. Wait, Baltic birch is a little bit heavier. You're right. So you, I would, you know, you can just use. Um, if you're going to be using drawers, uh, I would use a half inch. If you're going to be using, um, you know, you know, if you're building out cabinets, you three quarter inch birch is probably fine. Uh, and you know, actually, maple is actually really light. So uh, out of the ones I've mentioned, maple's probably the lightest, although I wouldn't use a three-quarter inch maple. Uh, we're talking about plywood, um, and I would use, because we're building vans, we're not building, you know, this is the difference between building in a house and building in a van. They're two totally different things. I would use either pocket drills, pocket screws, cleats, uh, and pocket, what I mean by Craig, or cleats to kind of make your cabinetry up. And so it's a little bit different than you would do in a house, but again, you're actually doing a house kind of very similar. Uh, but you have to, Yeah. Um, that we're going, now I'm going down a tangent, but yes, um, again, same woods. I, I mean, I'll, I just used birch in my last one. Um, I didn't use Baltic birch uh, maybe for my drawers I did, but I didn't, you know, I just used birch plywood and then I painted a lot of it, uh, is what I used. 
Thanks for the names. The apps in the park of rent. Uh, Boondockers, welcome. That is a good one, Jolene. Mm-hmm. I think that's the one. Northern Indiana, they are 100K vans uh, for comfort. But they, you know what? If there's a <coughs> – um, most professional builders are coming in right around 100 grand. Um, it's just nature of the game now uh, because there's a, they're starting to realize that there's a lot of work that goes into these vans. Uh, so I think those – Sixty, seventy thousand dollar van builds are a thing of the past. People are starting to realize, our builders are starting to realize just how much time and energy and um, products they're putting into these vans. Uh, the labor is just crazy, labor intensive. So um, you can find people to do a forty thousand dollar van build, but that's going to go back to me saying that you're going to pay what you get for. I will check them out. Um, whoever said that, Northern Indiana. Uh, War City. I will definitely check them out. Um, and I plan on doing a lot more tours of a lot more companies. I don't know them personally, but I'm more than happy to always check them out. Do you have any recommendations as a replacement for the dual zone Dometic that are currently on back order? Hate to break this to you. you almost every van life product is on back order right now. But um, I actually, if you're using a top loader, which is the dual zone Dometic, I believe, I um, I prefer as a top loader to use the winter. I think it's spelled W Y I N T E R. Um, winter is a, um, an actual dual zone. So it actually has two lids, one for freezer, one for refrigerator. Um, so I prefer the winter model a little bit better. Uh, Dometic seems a little bit better when, in, in regards to ruggedness, but I think the, uh, the winter is a better refrigerator in my personal opinion. Check them out. They're probably, they shouldn't be on back order too. I don't think so, at least. I said it's 80 degrees and it, and it's, it works works less. Yeah. Uh, Chuck down. That was exactly what I did. I, it did. I Honestly, the Cruise and Comfort, it's, it's amazing. It's by far, in my opinion, the best air conditioner on the market, hands down. Um, and I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Um, I know that Chuck down has enjoyed this his entire summer long because it was a hot summer again. And when is summer not hot? Fan is on a two, not the fastest. Ah, okay. That makes sense. So 25, 25 to 27 amps. That's pretty damn good. And you run that thing all night. Good for you. Uh, let's see here. Vita girl. What up? Minor setback. Didn't have a paper. Title, so I had to order one. Delayed purchase on the van. I'm sorry to hear that, but at least as long as you're getting it. Harvest Host requires a fully self-contained unit with a gray and black tank. Um, yes, that's what their their thing is. That's why I knew something was weird about them. Why don't the RV van builders use a gray water to flush the toilet and rinse the black tank? Most van builders I know actually don't even install black tanks at all. The black tank is a thing of the past. It is a 1990s, early 2000s thing where they, I think van builders are just like, we don't need black tanks. We can do without them. So I don't know why, Dan. I don't know. Uh, I'd love to find a van builder that would be. Peter Girl, have you reached out to a bunch at all? I'm sure you watched my video about how to pick a van builder. So they uh, go in and ask them, you know, a boatload of questions and, and go with your gut instincts for sure. Uh, hey, Jared and Ghosters, uh, has anyone heard of uh, road lift kits for the weekenders in family van? Road lift kits. Interesting. I have to like start writing these things down because I need to check them out too. You guys know obviously more than I do at this point. Uh, you said you were thinking about an overland build. I'm not thinking about doing an overland build. There are lots of diesel 4 by 4 school buses. No, I already have my, my vehicle. I appreciate it, though. Uh, especially a 4x4 four four diesel bus. Whew. Especially in the northeast. Just saying. They're usually Bluebird or GM Jazzes. I am this close to actually buying a duck boat, if you guys are familiar with those. If my buddy Anthony um, finds uh, a duck boat that he's talking about, I will purchase that thing tomorrow. <laughs> If it's the right price, it's not, it has to be like a thousand bucks because I'm not spending more than that on a duck boat because they're like 1940s chassis and they're crazy. 
but it would be fun. It would just be so much fun to have because I actually there's like a boat ramp like right near where my shop is, and you could just take it down in the boat ramp, and then you could just like go out of the water and you could take it back up. It, it, it would just be cool. Um, hey, uh, ooh, let's move my chair. Hey, uh, hope you're good. I am good. Hope you're good. I'm great. Sorry, I was f- fasty ping. Okay. Uh, yuck, black tanks. <laughs> and then a bunch of pool emojis. I like it. Poop. Pooping. Hey, everybody poops, right? <laughs> that was a great book as a kid. Uh, that was a great video on how to pick a builder. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate you. We're going to start wrapping this up. Holy Christmas. I'm at 40 minutes. Hell yeah, duck boat. I see them all the time in Austin. Yes. Uh, be easy. A lot of uh, places use them as tours, tour, tour, you know, things. So I know Chicago has them. I know Boston has them. I don't know if Portland has them. Uh, the bunch of cities have them. I think Seattle has them. Um, great way to do tours of your your cities. So duck boats. I would. They don't decommission them often, um, but if I can get a, ha- a hold of one, that would be frigging awesome. Uh, but I'm not spending a lot of money on them. I, but it would be kind of just. I just want to be one of those random people that does it. Should I book time with Nomadic to go over my electrical system? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, he does know what he's talking about. So I, why, why not? Right. Um, I would definitely book time with somebody if you don't know electrical, uh, I am planning on doing an electrical video with light harvest solar very, 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 very soon. Uh, I think we actually, him and I actually talked today. So we are planning that I think at the end of the month and that should be out early October. Uh, so definitely, I would definitely, uh, look into, having talking to a professional before doing any type of um, off-grid solar, off-grid electrical. Uh, induction cooktop with cast iron skillet. That's exactly what I use. So yes, I agree. I think that's great. Harvey Goldberg. What a name. Did you look into pop-ups that fit into the pickup trucks? Uh, yes. I wanted my pickup to be actually a pickup truck. I didn't want to have to take off the camper on the back or that pop-up on the back. I wanted the tent to always be on the, on the bed. And then I wanted to use my pickup for pickup purposes. Cause I will be using it as a work truck as well. I also wanted a four door, which is why I got the gladiator uh, for as well as like a car. So it was kind of like my whole thought process behind everything. Um, and maybe I can't announce this right now. I've actually been talking to down to Moab. If you guys know his YouTube channel, him and I are actually going to be working together on a video in somewhat near future. Uh, well, I'll say before the end of the year. Um, he also has a gladiator uh, and great YouTube channel. So shout out to uh, Down to Moab. Um, great, great YouTuber that does a lot of overlanding stuff. So uh, I, hit, I hit him up and I was like, hey, I, you know, everybody tells me to, t- to talk to you. So I'm talking to you. <laughs> We've had a conversation in the last 24 hours. Fantastic human being. I, I love him already. And I haven't even met the guy. So I can't wait to uh, talk more with him and, and do a video with him in the near future. Uh, he's also going to te- check out my tent. He's a big rooftop tent kind of guy. So really, really excited for him as well. Winter is the only available one in California. I tried the other brands. Damn it. That sucks. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm booking time with them after I do my van. Good job. Beat a girl. Electrical video. I can't wait. Yeah, neither can I. I'm just, like super nervous about it because I don't know. Ele- I know electrical. I know like probably a little bit beyond the basics. I'm like intermediate status, um, but they're going to like teach me how to like wire and why the wires and I'm going to bring my camera to all this. So I don't, I, I want to do the video, but I'm also really nervous of the video because I know with a video like that, there's going to be a crap ton of emails to follow it. So I'm really, that's why I'm nervous. Did a duck boat tour somewhere near Tahoe or Nevada was cool and fun. I honestly kind of, I just want one. If anybody has a website of a duck boat, let me know. <laughs> I recently heard a duck boat tour company in Seattle just closed up shop. Unfortunately, perhaps more to follow, but $1,000 for a duck boat seems unrealistic. That's why I said it, because there's no way that somebody's going to sell a duck boat for $1,000. I mean, maybe $5,000, but like, I don't, I, I don't have that kind of funds. This goes back to somebody calling me rich earlier. Um, I don't have money to spend, so I, I'm not rich. And I, if I did, trust me, I'd, I'd, I'd buy a fleet of vans and build them. Uh, check out my my tent. Sounds like 
It does sound like a euphemism. Uh, but anyways, uh, guys, I'm going to start to wrap this up. I'm getting tired. I'm going to go eat some dinner. And I have to actually edit a video for everybody. Uh, it was a wonderful trip that I took to Bend. It was a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. You guys got to see a couple vans. You get to see my Jeep. Uh, I'm putting that vi uh, video out tomorrow as well as another tour. My buddy JP. Um, good good guy, good looking guy. Uh, and he, um, his tour, his van was, he's brand new to van life, only been in it for a month. I got to tour his van and it was built by uh, Sportsmobile, which is a great company. So it was really interesting to see how somebody's living in a Sportsmobile converted van from the 90s. So um, check out that tour that's coming this weekend. And I have a really, really cool tour coming next week, which will be, I believe, one of the Nomadic Customs vans. Happy Labor Day to everybody out there. Uh, that is, I believe, this weekend. Uh, so be safe. If you are taking any trips, uh, just be safe out there. Go eat, have a beer. Thank you, Vita Girl. I do need a beer. Although I don't have any in my refrigerator, so now i got to walk to the store and grab a beer. Uh, just wondering about Tiny Fest in Iowa, when and where. I would check out the website. I believe it's just tinyfest.com. I, I think it's in mid... I, I don't know, actually. It might be mid-September, unless it already passed in mid-August. I don't know. They also have an Instagram page, Tiny Fest. Um... I don't, again, I don't even know if it's still going on. I don't know if she canceled it or not. Uh, question, I'll read this one more time. Just wondering about, oh, that was your, oh, gotcha. Uh, do you know any custom builders that do transit vans and build this back? Uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of them, and they can be fine as an RV. Dan, the, uh, I think most legitimate builders should have a connection to get your um, your rig financed as an RV. Oh, fine. oh, can be financed as an RV. Oof, that one's tough. The only one that I know of off the top of my head, I just did a tour with them, which was Rome America or Access Vehicles. Um, they do more of an adventure rig style, but they do have finance, RV financing available. Um, I do know Mark from Nomadic Customs is working on that, um, but actually he does transit. They do transits only, Access Vehicles. So check them out because they do... I know for a fact they do financing, but only for Oregonians or people that live in Oregon. I don't know what that word would be, but um, I think they're working on nationwide. I, you'd have to call them and ask. Those are those are stuff that I don't know. Sorry. Uh, all right, guys. I will see you soon. Uh, I might I might take a little break off of live streams. Um, I just got a lot going on this month, so I might take a, a short break off of live streams. And I'm getting a call. I'm, I'm going to pick this up live. Let's see. Hold on one second. Yo, Dustin, you're you're on speakerphone, so don't cuss. And you're on you're on live stream. Okay, right on. Um, uh, yeah, tell 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 everybody on my live uh, why you're calling me. I am calling you. Because I have smooth black rhino wheels and profit tires for you for your five year. So if you guys didn't pick that up, uh, I ordered rims and tires uh, through my boy Dustin at Overland Van Project. Um, hey, Dustin, do you do financing for RVs, like RV builds? We do, yeah. We have a couple spec builds coming out, and we do have a avenue for financing them up to 80%. There it is. So uh, Dustin from Overland Van Project also does uh, financing for um, for vans. So that's pretty cool. Um, I am going to now take this call with Dustin because he has um, a very expensive thing for me right now, which are my tires and rims for my Jeep. So I'm about to go spend a lot of money, guys. But I will see you guys all next week. And uh, again, shout out to Dustin because he just hooked me up, uh, even though I am paying them. But it's all good. Um, and go check out Dustin at Overland Van Project, and I will see you guys probably next week on the live, and I got a video coming out tomorrow. Later! All right, buddy, what's going on?